Good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath. Good morning. Good morning, happy Sabbath. <laughs> That's better. Well, I welcome each one of you who are seated here and those who are watching us online. Today, the weather is a bit gloomy, but then what I do hope is that all of your smiles will lighten up this day and make it joyful and beautiful. With this, I welcome each one of you to our Sabbath School service this morning. For our opening song, let us sing song number 73, Holy, Holy, Holy. Song number 73. Holy, Holy, Holy. Lord God Almighty, Early in the morning, our song shall raise to thee. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. May our voices raise this morning together, glorify God's name, and thanking Him for all His blessings. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Sabbath day. We thank you for the gift of life, for the mercy and your grace. Father, as we are gathered here together after another week, as we render our praises and worship to thee, 
may be acceptable in thy eyes. Be with all those who are on the way here. We pray, Father, that they'll reach us safely. And be with those who are not here with us today. We hope and pray that they are healthy and that they are still believing in you. Father, as we worship you, help us to maintain reverence and please forgive us of all our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's feature talk today, I'm, uh, I was supposed to be only dealing only with the Sabbath school lesson, uh, sorry, with the mission report. However, Miss Gloria, who's supposed to be here, is not here, so I'm taking her place. So today's mission, uh, sorry, uh, feature talk is about the sunflower. I think I have told it earlier, and uh, I would like for those of them who don't know, sunflower, we see these sunflowers during the uh, during the season they grow during the spring season however this beautiful sunlight in sunflower as the name suggests it goes it uh, it uh, they say it goes by the sun so however the sun is uh, facing so they face the sun so if the sun is at midday so they face they they turn their heads up straight up so when the sun is setting, it goes this way. So you can see them turn through uh, throughout the day. But what about the gloomy days when there is no sun? What do you think those uh, the sunlight, the sunflowers should do? It will shrink. No, mm. they don't shrink. The beauty it's about close. the sun. No, the beauty about this sunflower is they face towards each other, oh. and they draw their energy from each other. This is the beauty of the sunflower. So just uh, think about us. When the sunflower, when God created, can do some wonderful things to draw energy for themselves, how about we? We are supposed to draw our energy from who? From Jesus. He is our strength in our weakness. So we are going to be, we are, we are supposed to look to Jesus and draw like the sunflower, like the sunflower, we have to turn our degrees of focus exactly how Jesus is uh, portraying to us. So with this little example, so you, you, can, you can judge for yourselves if you are doing so. If you are like the sunflower, drawing energy from Jesus so that your years and your day's work will be successful and will bring glory and honor to God. Okay, so today's uh, I continue with the mission uh, uh, mission spotlight. So today's uh, story is sobered by God's grace. So uh, the story goes this way. I quickly wind up because of time. So in the 1970s, there were two couples who uh, by, uh, by name Navajo, unknown to each other, they sent their children to the Adventist school, uh, which were uh, uh, teenagers. Uh, which was uh, which is in Hallbrook Seventh-day Adventist Indian School located 100 miles away. The boy then these two uh, parents I don't know who had the boy and who had the girl but it was a boy and a girl. So they they come to this Adventist school they they get friendly to each other and they end up being uh, being baptized and after being baptized they met Jesus they they come to the conclusion that they will be married. So after being married in their hometown called Chinle in Arizona. So the uh, so these two little uh, people they were named as Dennis and Gloria. So when uh, when they were united in marriage, they brought forth a little child uh, whose uh, whose name was Oliver, and they uh, they decided that they will uh, um, they they will uh, what do you say? Uh, what is uh, what you call the, the child when dedication? Sorry, dedication. they will dedicate their child in the Adventist church, and Oliver, sure enough, was in the little village of the church, and he was he was uh, introduced to Jesus. But so high, it so happens that um, things got out of the way because Gloria was too busy doing her nursing job, 
and uh, so was Dennis with, with other jobs. So they lost contact with the church. So in the meanwhile, because they they got uh, lost with their jobs, they got their so and with the church. So you know what the enemy will do? He drove them away from the church contact. So what happened to Dennis? Dennis became an alcoholic, and it so happened that the the family was now not very happy with the progress of what uh, Dennis was doing. So, and Gloria was very busy with her uh, nursing job. Meanwhile, the little boy also grew up. When he grew up, seeing his father drink, this is what we as parents, I was, when I, I was touched, I said, we as parents should be examples to our children. Of course, we are not perfect, but then they can see the little things that, that we do, that children imitate. So, seeing Dennis drink, this little boy, imitated his father and he became a drunkard at a very early age. He started drinking too. So, what happened? Uh, the Oliver was, uh, uh, you know, was uh, with this habit for a long time until uh, the age of 38, he became very desperate about his life because his life demanded that he go to a new town after graduating in school, he go to a new town uh, and uh, get his uh, master degree. When in the master degree, it was uh, so bad for Oliver that he decided to give up his drinking because that was interfering with his master degree. So he was very desperate and he decided uh, in his heart, this is what God wants us to do. When there is something in us, we must recognize our weakness and go forward to excel to the Lord and tell him, this is my weakness, Lord, I cannot do it. So this is what Oliver did. He told his weakness, Lord, this is too much for me. I cannot ha handle it. So, you know what Oliver did? He went back to his to hometown, his school town, his home where he lived. He attended the church there. He came to know that uh, the church was having some program for the alcoholics. So he attended the church. He attended the program and uh, and sure enough, the pastor came to know, come, come to, came to know that all over there was a new attendant uh, in the in the congregation of the uh, of the alcoholic uh, congregation that they, they were doing this. Uh, what is this? What do you call that? Rehabilitation. Alcoholic Anonymous. Anonymous. It's a rehabilitation contact for this one. So he saw a new member there, and then. It so happened that uh, he saw he made, gave him uh, an invitation for lunch. So when Olu went there, he told the pastor, Pastor, I am the worst enemy on the earth. I think God will never uh, never forgive me for what I have done. So I need you know, for, I need to put myself right. So he found the lunch that was provided for him as very nutritious, very happy. And therefore, it, uh, Oliver was... Um, uh, Oliver says, I just thought that I may be sober here, I think sober up, so, that I will uh, sober because I need Jesus. So the, 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 the thought behind Oliver was, if, I, if Jesus could help me, I will help some more people who are like me, suffering like me. That was uh, Oliver's uh, intention behind it. And sure enough, Oliver was... Um, uh, they was successful in uh, in doing uh, in doing the rehab uh, program there at the church, and uh, Oliver now has been sober for four years now, and now he says at the church Oliver met a woman, Tracy, and with her own story of Jesus delivering her from heroin addiction, you see, and uh, he meets the little uh, the, uh, this uh, young lady. He I uh, think he marries her. Then the back uh, then the pastor married. Uh, uh, the baptizes both Oliver and her and gives them in marriage and now they have they have been there. and the good thing is that Oliver goes back to the same church to be married where his parents were, were married 40 years ago. Isn't it wonderful that he, he traces back to his his uh, old roots. So that others, uh, Jesus says, you know, uh, look for the old ways. So he traces back his path to the old ways and he gets re reunited with his family and with Jesus. And today Oliver is a great witness for the Lord. So may the Lord bless us and keep us.
to be as witnesses for him wherever we are. Amen. That was crispy. That was crispy and uh, you know, so great. Uh, especially about that sun flower. Uh, I never imagined about that. That was a very good shot. Looking into each other, you know, to gain uh, the strength from. Uh, that's a beautiful thing. Many times we live in a world, a hostile world, where, uh, you know, humanity is taken for granted. We can learn a lot of things from nature uh, that remind us that, you know, we gain strength, we gain, okay, from one another. That is the beauty of life. God not only has created us independent, uh, but uh, He has created us as a social beings that we interdependent on one another. You know, that's also the beautiful okay, part that I could be able to recognize as uh, Sister was talking about, you know, some are praising each other. And it, uh, of course, ultimately, the Son of Righteousness. That is Jesus Christ. He is the source of all blessings and uh, it's so beautiful. And of course, like uh, Mission Spotlight was okay, very, very, very nice about how, you know, we can draw lessons from uh, Mission Spotlight week on my week. Okay, so once again, I want to welcome each one of you for the Sabbath School and uh, I believe that uh, today's lesson will be able to help us, uh, okay, uh, to understand about our Creator. God and Savior Jesus Christ. You know, we are uh, dealing with, you know, what, what, is, what, what, is, what, what is the topic that we have uh, to the whole form? Worshipping the Creator. Uh, Worshipping the Creator. Worshipping the Creator. Worshiping the creator. Yeah, I was about to ask, uh, what is the topic that we are dealing for the whole quarter? The cosmic message. So this is not only for a particular race, tribe, nothing, but it is, uh, you know, for everyone. Okay, that's the deal. And today, particularly, we're going to sp uh, study about um, worshiping the Creator. Uh, uh, let me put it okay, this way. Do we really know the Creator? Do we really know the Creator? I think that's an individual question. Everybody has to ask, ask to themselves ask the whether you know the Creator. That's the reason I didn't ask, do you know your Creator? Okay, when they say about this, one thing comes to my mind is parents. That makes sense? Children, it says here, take granted with their short-lived lives forgetting about their parents. Has it happened? Especially in the old days. Only once, oh, once they're gone, once they're no more, and we remember that, right? But till when they are existing with us, do we really take them for granted or uh, yeah. do we really care for them? Do we really, you know, remember them? A question to be asked. In the short lives that we live, it is so easy for us to take for granted little things that happens in our life. With a short-lived life that we are living on this earth, it says it so beautifully that we could be able to take granted the sun which is shining, the sky which we see every day, the birds, okay, that sings. That is so true, Pastor. Very, very true. Huh? Because they, are, they because they shine every day. Every day. So it's like it's like normal India. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. Mm. Everything is going on just yeah. that way and things like that. We, we forget to admire the real beauty mm. of God's creation. Exactly. That's what I mean to say. You know, uh, giving a platform or a foundation in this regard is the tendency to forget. I don't say our creator because that becomes more independent, independent. Okay? The creator. I'm talking particularly about it. A Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, why does the universe itself and all the majesty and grandeur and astonishing things in it exist to begin with? You have the idea? Okay, the question is very simple. 
Why does the universe itself and all the majesty and grandeur and astonishing thing, things in it exist to begin with? It's a, not a complicated one. It's a little twisty if I have to put it in a very simple words. Why do you think so this universe is existing? Because God created. Okay. Have you ever imagined, that's what the question is, why does this exist? So, the author goes on to say that, you know, there is a person behind and a reason for the existence of the universe. That's what it means to say. Okay, let's go a little bit further and uh, let's get into the Sunday's lesson. Okay, before getting to the Sunday's lesson, the one thing uh, the Sabbath school lesson helps us to understand is never forget the Creator. Why should we not be forget the Creator? How can we not be able to forget the Creator? Okay, why should we not be able to forget the Creator? The only reason, because He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the one who originated things for you and me. He is the one who gave everything which is there, what we see, hear, look, feel, everything is because of Him. So once He has done so much for us, uh, what is a reciprocative way of showing gratitude towards Him? The only way that we can be able to show gratitude to, to, towards Him is to worship, worship Him. him. And that's what, okay? We because are we are, worship, uh, we are recreated beings and mm -hmm. He's the Creator. Mm -hmm. So it is our sole responsibility mm -hmm. to worship God. Worship God, okay? The Creator. Absolutely, absolutely. I, think, mm -hmm. I can add to what you say. Like uh -huh. Every time you wake up in the morning, mm -hmm. it is like if you have appreciated life, mm -hmm. You will definitely feel the appreciation, oh, today I'm able to see the day. I'm able to see the daylight. If it was not so, I would be sleeping in the sleep only. I would never, never wake up to see the beauty of the day or even breathe. So if you appreciate life, as she said, you will appreciate everything around you and you will praise God for another day. And I have to add to that point, especially me, when my eyes are open, I say thank you Jesus for my eyes. And especially people who have health challenges like me, very grateful to God that I have an eyes to see. And uh, uh, this old song from Jim Reeves uh, is so beautiful. I always uh, play that in my, okay? Uh, we thank thee for the sunshine, you know, and the eyes that you're given to see, you know, that's so beautiful. I think we should be singing for that after that. <laughs> okay, so let's get into the Sunday's portion about uh, okay, worshipping the Creator. You know, this Creator is one and the only person who will be there in the time of tribulation. He is the only one, and he is the one who makes the statement in the Old Testament, even sometimes in this 21st century, we could see that happening in our own naked eyes, that is, uh, parents might be able to forget their children. And of course, it's inevitable that, you know, uh, children forgive their parents, you know, one point or the other, okay? But the Bible says it very clearly that the Lord will not be able to forsake you. He is going to be there with you forever. And I'm telling you, the very moment that I started my life here to the United States, I will experience that. Companion in tribulation. I don't know when I talk about tribulation, you know, what we're going through might be just a fraction of thing compared to what is going to happen in the future. That's called the Jacob's time of trouble. We all believe that as we read uh, the book of Revelation chapter 14, we are in the three angels' message. Mm -hmm. The Bible is absolutely very clear before the, you know, when the judgment is happening, there's going to be sifting and saving. Once the sifting and saving is happening, you, you and I are absolutely aware that the Lord is going to, okay, move from the most holy place and come out of the temple. And that's the time where the spirit will be restrained. You and I will not have an opportunity even we'll be able to, you know, Repent. Repent, uh, you know, uh, pray to him or something. And that's the time that the Bible says the good will be good and the bad will be bad and the righteous will be righteous and the holy will be holy and the unrighteous will be unrighteous. Okay, and that's the time that we are living in. We don't know what tribulation is all about. But I'm telling you, if you and I are facing a little difficulties here and there, doesn't know how to go about it, and this is just a prelude for you 
that await something which is greater to come. Why I say this? In this little things, if we are able to experience and tasting and seeing that the Lord is good, in this greater time of tribulation, you can trust God in every angle. Does it make sense? So if you and I are seeking the Lord in every angle of life, are experiencing Him day in and day out, the day will come during the time of tribulation. When nobody will be there with you. When you stand alone in your faith. And then you can be able to depend on the son of righteousness. That is Jesus Christ. Until unless we don't experience that now. It will be much more difficult for us to experience. When the real great tribulation comes to existence. That makes sense when I say that? Okay. Let's move all that. Okay. After the ascension to heaven. In Acts chapter 1 verse 9. Jesus visited the last of the living apostle, that is John. Okay, that is the he is the last person who dies. Okay, you know you, you know that among all the disciples, he is the last one to you know who died. And also he was the youngest. One. He was the youngest one. Absolutely right. Okay, so he visits in the island of Patmos, where John had been exiled by the ruthless Roman emperor called Domitian. If you have to go to the book of Revelation. Okay, chapter 1 verse 9, Matthew chapter 13 verse 12, Acts 14, 22, and John 16, 33. There is an important message for all who seek to follow Jesus in this world. Okay, what is that message? You know, support, uh, you know, separated from the support of his family, friends, and the Christian community, John was not left alone. How do you know that? Because he saw the revelation of Jesus. Absolutely, he sees, in fact... You know, he was translated into heaven and he was one of the most privileged person to see from end to the beginning of what is going to happen. Either it might be judgment, either the real face of Jesus was seen by John. The mission of Jesus was completed in heaven and that was being foreseen by John and John Rome. That is the beauty. Okay. So when did he see that? When he was in a grave situation, separated from family, friends, and nobody. You know where is the Isle of Patmos? How was the Isle of Patmos? It was. It was one of the most ruthless places. Nothing except the trees, skies, animals around him, bugs. If John could be able to experience and be able to see the beauty of heaven and everything was going to happen in the future, something should be able to trigger for each one of us in this regard. Okay, what 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 do you feel, sister? Brother? What do you feel, sister? What do you feel, sister? Okay, when you remember John in that kind of situation, being able to experience the presence of the Lord, you know something should be able to trigger in a heart, mind, and soul. What do you think, so? For me, even though if we face uh, storms of life, mm -hmm. health challenges, mm -hmm. tribulations, mm -hmm. looking at the story of John, uh -huh. the revelator, uh -huh. it gives me hope uh -huh. and strength uh -huh. that God is always by my side uh -huh. and he will see me through. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. That is a beautiful experience. That if you, uh, it, it, the simple phenomenon that I want to put up, you know, in, in a small phrase is that if you and I have to really experience the beauty of the creator, most probably ask God, He will take us through tribulations. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of the uh, picture uh. Uh, a man, two people walking on the sand, mm -hmm. and one is being carried. Mm -hmm. So, when we have tribulations and storms mm -hmm. and health mm -hmm. problems, mm -hmm. God is seeing us mm -hmm. and He's not going to prevent the storm for us, mm -hmm. but He's going to take us through the storm. Okay, so as we went through a little foundation before we could begin about worshipping the Creator, okay, just imagine we tend to forget God. When is the time we tend to forget God? When everything is going rosy. When everything is absolutely rosy, when everything is going on well, you tend to forget that. When we are 
Yes. Okay, the only time that we can be able to experience God, either take in the Old Testament, David, when did they experience God? Very much. When tribulation is God. Why do you think so? Why do you think so? The Lord of heaven took the children of Israel in the wilderness experience. He wanted, he wanted to manifest himself with greater power and mighty so that these guys will be able to experience who this real creator God is all about. Yeah. That makes sense? What about Moses? When did he experience God? When? Yeah. Not while he was in Egypt. When did he experience? Yeah. In the wilderness. What about David? In the wilderness, where were supposed to, the, you know, the children of Israel were supposed to experience God? Not in Egypt, where? In wilderness. Okay, where did Jesus himself experience the closeness of his father? In the wilderness. Two times. In the wilderness. Number one. Garden of Gethsemane. Garden of Gethsemane. Of course, first is wilderness, of course, we, we are talking about. And the second one is where? Okay? Garden of Gethsemane. And Paul also in the wilderness of Arabia. Mm -hmm. That God mm -hmm. talked to him and instructed him what he has to do to prepare for the ministry. Absolutely, absolutely. Take the twenty disciples. Sir. Where did they experience God really? After Jesus left. After Jesus left, and where they were drawn to mm -hmm. wilderness, even though they were here with the people, you know, the people created wilderness for all the disciples. Yes. But you see how strong Paul was, how strong Peter was. Okay, but when Jesus was there next to his disciples, they never understood who this Jesus was. So that Does that make sense? The question you asked the beginning, you said, uh, when we take things are going to be easy, mm -hmm. this is what mm -hmm. they said, mm -hmm. Jesus was simply talking. Okay, so now the simple, so yeah, the simple phenomenon that I want to put is, are we ready for wilderness? We should ask. Are we ready because for we, every time we ask, God bless us. You know, mm -hmm. what is a blessing? Wilderness is a okay, thank you very much. Okay, what we have to ask is, Lord, we want to experience you. We want to see you face to face. We want to be a part of you. If we really want to, if we really want to be a part of God, if we really want to see his face, if we really want to experience him in every angle, are we really wanting to experience him in every angle of life? Are we asking God, Lord, take me. The wilderness. I think it is like uh, asking yourself if your faith is serious, mm -hmm. then you will ask for real stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. If absolutely. your faith is like wavering or you want a rosy faith, mm -hmm. then you will not. Look so, at it. the lesson is teaching for each one of us if we really <coughs> want to experience what they can see that the Lord is good. Like David, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow, I will right. take me there. But, but uh, I have uh, something about Job. Mm -hmm. Job never had any wilderness thoughts. Like he, were, he was good. God had blessed him all through. But still he chose to be with God mm -hmm. even when wilderness came. Yeah, see the thing is the beauty of the story is thank you for bringing up that one. Okay, Job's story. Okay. Even Job, he worshipped God, he did everything. But when did he really know about who this God is all about? When wilderness came in. came in. This is what the fulcrum of the message today because it is so beautiful. He says that he is the companion in tribulation. He says, if you were to enter the cave where it is purported that John was visited by the heavenly angels with revelations, prophetic vision, you would immediately notice those words placed on the plague at its entrance, summarizing the entire book of Revelation which is recorded in 14 chapter 7, fear God, and give glory to him. The hour of judgment is come. You know, the central issue of the book of Revelation is nothing but worship. You take the book of Genesis. What is the problem? Worship. Worship. Go to Egypt. The Lord said, I want to take the children of Israel from Egypt. You know, what was the problem? Worship. Go to the book of Daniel. Okay, Shabbat What is the problem? Worship. Worship. Come to Acts chapter 7. What is the problem? Worship. Go to the book of Revelation, particularly 14. 
Okay? Have you heard about, you know, either Babylon or Jerusalem? All of the beast are God. What is God trying to tell us in the book of Revelation? Absolutely right. Okay, he's talking about what is What is the reminding of? He is the all source. He is the creator. He is the all creator, all source of Omega, blessing. Omega and Alpha. Yes. You know, every one of us worships something or someone. Is it true? Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know one thing, true worship, the worship of the Creator enables us to discover life's true purpose. Many a times, we do only exist, we don't live. The Bible is teaching each one of us, don't exist, live. That life, living a life is constrained only with Jesus and Jesus alone. Because Jesus said, I am the life. That's what it means to say. You know, it gives a reason for living. Jesus gives a reason for living. It gives us not only something to die, but also, even most significantly, something to live and, if need be, to endure tribulation for. And indeed, as the final crisis arises, we would better understand that we must, through many tribulations, enter into the kingdom of God. That's what is written in Acts chapter 14 was pretty low. So we are talking about this creator and tribulation and for everlasting to everlasting. It is promised and experienced by all our patriarchs that when everybody leaves, he is going to be there with us. And the day is not far because to enter into the kingdom of God is not going to be so easy. We have to go through tribulations. There is no option. There is no other road. There is no other way. We have to pass through that one. Until and as you pass, you can never inherit. That's what Acts chapter 14, verse 22 say. You know, if faithful servants of God like John face suffering and tribulation, what makes us think we ourselves won't face trouble either? Question. Okay. Okay, so that is, uh, okay, the, 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 the pre rule okay, for our lessons once again. Any questions? Anything to contribute? Okay. Uh, Solomon said, mm -hmm. remember the creator in the days of the youth. Mm -hmm. And um, also he said, give glory to God. That's the whole duty of man. He summarized everything into one sentence. Give mm -hmm. glory to him. Mm -hmm. That is worship. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 17. Absolutely right. Okay. We go to the Monday's part. This is worship the creator. In Revelation chapter 14 verse 7 ends with a clarion call to worship the creator. And this call is especially important now. You know, when most of the scientific and even the Christian world have accepted evolution. And of course the teaching. Okay, the strikes at the very heart of the things, okay, biblical, okay, and Christians, if evolution were true, our faith would of necessarily be alive. Okay, that's how stuck the issues are. We are doing this last days. We have evolutionists, right? And we have people who, 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 okay, who believe in God and the people who doesn't believe in God too. Okay, if there are two parties this way, contemplating on their own theories, they have their own theories to prove, okay? You know, the atheists or you know, the evolution, they, they, they prove it so clearly that there is no God. At the same time, you know, in faith, people who believe in God, we tend to, most probably, I don't say that we can be able to prove, of course we can prove, okay, in one sense or the other in faith, but, you know, again, when we talk about proof, it, it is things which we can be able to see. But when we talk about God, things which are unseen, that is hope, okay? But the beauty of the book of Revelation's final appeal that is rooted in the Bible's first book, that is Genesis, we will never fully understand the issue in this cosmic battle over worship until unless we understand the significance of creation. One example has been given about the sun. Okay, the sun 
as the diameter of approximately 865,000 miles. And they say, you, it will hold nearly one million planets the size of Earth into the sun. Mm. How many? One million planets can be accommodated in the sun. That's just a simple thing. And it goes on to say, but the sun is just one of at least 100 billion stars in our galaxies. <laughs> that makes sense? Just imagine the sun, most probably 865,000 diameters, just, uh, you know, the whole circumference. And how, how, much, how much can we put? You know, how much of this earth can we put? One million of this earth. Okay, sorry. It is 100, uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is one million planets of the size of the earth can be accommodated in one sun. So that is, sun is just only one thing. We have nearly 100 million suns like that. Hmm. And we, we are talking about God. We are talking about the Creator. How much do we know about a Creator? That's the question. Do we really know about a Creator? You know, scientists are grappling around of every element which was created by God. When you talk about the periodic table, the chemicals, the combination of chemicals, we have more than 100 million suns like that. Yeah, what I, I understand, what I got to uh, mm. point is, mm. to me personally, is what are we looking at the creator mm. is the facts about the creator. Mm -hmm. The facts. Mm -hmm. That is, I know, okay, uh, Nalini is this, this, this. Uh, you, know, you know me outwardly. Mm -hmm. But to really, to me, as you said, do you know your creator mm. means I don't go with the facts. Facts also matter, but I go with the character of the person, who God is. That is knowing your creator. Mm -hmm. it, it, thank you very much. Okay, okay, that, that, that's one way of uh, absolutely looking into the character of God. Okay, we're going to cut that in a few minutes from now. But what I'm is, is, you see how big God is. The knowledge that He is a creator. And, 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 and I'm telling you, if you, you, this human mind can never fathom who this creator is all about. We are talking about the greatness of God. When John is telling, worship your creator. We have to know about his creation. So how much do we really know about his creation? Creative power. You see, creative, okay, creative power. How much do we really know about the creative power of God? A question this human mind can never be able to answer at all. Mm -hmm. exactly. We were coming on the way where we were looking at the roses. That itself overwhelmed us. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. said, oh my Lord, so beautiful. My eyes cannot behold to see the, those simple flowers on the way. So, Creation reveals a God of awesome might and unlimited power. His creative power not only brought the heavens and earth into existence, but also at work in behalf of his people through the centuries. He is the God who began this world, who is ever present in this world, and who will never forsake his people in this world. So you and I have been created with a purpose. You and I have an opportunity to experience this creator in our life here now. Only provided if you and I can understand who this creator is all about. Let's go a little bit further. And this creator God with unlimited power. The beauty we are talking about is character, right? Okay, forget about his righteous. Okay, and of course he is every time, you know, he is holy. That is his attitude. But the other character or the other important thing that we can be able to experience of God is Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 Emmanuel God is with us God is with us here let's stand at the door and knock Psalm chapter 23 he leaves the 99 and wants to come back at 1 he when we talk about the creative power and the unimaginable power of God, it is fine. 
That is one part of the story. The other part of the story is the same God who is so powerful is able to be so close with us now and willing to enter the hearts and change your heart, my dear soul. We are talking about worship. Why is God worthy of worship? Why should we worship God? You see, the attributes that we are talking about. You know, when we are children, we learn this song, My God is so big. How big is our God? <laughs> so big. Hmm? How big is our God? The God who is so close. You know, how can we learn to draw hope and comfort from understanding the immense of God? Or does it scare you because God knows you? everything about you. He knows everything about me, right? There's nothing that he can be able to open upon. Everything that what I think, what I do, how I go, how I do things to that. The darkest the secrets of my life is not known by anyone, but God knows it. That's the reason David writes this beautiful. There's a song in Canada too. Where can I hide from God? Where can I go and hide? Can I go to heaven? Can I go to the depths of hell or the depths of darkness? Can I can I be able to hide myself from the face of God? No way. Mm -hmm. You know, we were talking about uh, uh, 865,000 miles, right? About the sun. Okay, we talked about like you know, 100 billion uh, stars. So I've been created in our galaxies and the Milky Way. One star called the Pistol Star gives as much as 10 billion times the power generated by the sun. And it goes on to say that you know the whole earth, you know, the, the heat that generates, you know, in this in this earth with coal, with a whole lot of stuff and things like that. You keep on generating, it doesn't even match to the little element where the sun been able to generate that heat from. What fathoms me is uh -huh. about the star perspective. Mm -hmm. From the beginning when I have learned about the revelation mm -hmm. is that when, when, we, when we go to heaven, we are going to get stars on our crown. Uh -huh. I probably don't know if these are the stars that we will be holding in our crown. <laughs> <laughs> it fathoms maybe this one or something else, but some star. Yeah. Star means maybe as I read, maybe those are the stars that God is going to put it on my crown and your crown. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's yeah, yeah. In fact, to be honest with you, I also was wondering when you were talking about that. But you know, when, 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 you know every time I, uh, when, I, when I'm alone, I contemplate on it. Even yesterday, like almost every day, I'd be wondering, how is heaven all about? What is this life existence all about? What are we doing? Uh, do we really worshiping God? Do we really be able to match up to the expectation of what the Lord really wants to? You know, why I thought about it is uh, Brother the Lord should be able to be surprised and. Uh, uh, one, one time because uh, Anand is a very kind man, okay, he always has some standards, okay, and uh, one thing is for sure that I can never ever match up to his expectation, that's for sure. In, in the sense, like, you know, physically speaking, like, you know, either it might be cleanliness, either he go a mile to go and help someone, something of some sort, in every angle, I can never match up, okay, 100 percent brother Rana, I don't know, you got a wrong person here, but one thing is for sure, I can never be able to match up to the expectation of brother Rana, just an example I'm trying to give, okay. How about, yesterday I was thinking about it. Okay, he takes every detail into consideration. It wants to be this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. You know, past four years I'm here. Okay, not even one person I'm able to match up with him in every angle. Yesterday night, I didn't sleep. You know, all these thoughts were running into my mind. And I was thinking, Lord, can I be able to match up to you? Hmm. We're so particular in every angle. Because every incident, every person, Everything which happens in our life should be able to contemplate about our Creator in heaven and match up to that expectation in every angle. What the Bible is trying to say for you and me in the book of Revelation is we are talking about worship. And I'm telling you, okay, we don't worship God just for the sake of worship. No. We don't come to church and listen to His word just for the sake of listening. No. We have to match up to his expectation of how he wants us to. And he has given all. 
we have to raise our standard. Raise our standard how high there to him. Okay, we have to pray God. And we worship God for only one reason. Okay, because he's worthy of our worship. A God who is very close with us. The God of creation. Who brought the sun, moon, and stars into existence. Whose awesome power created this planet and filled it with living things. Also is a God who is interested in each one of us. And that's the reason John chapter 3 verse 64. God so loved the world. Everybody says it's so beautiful. If there was only one sinner on this earth, he would have come and died for that one person. The great news about God is that his greatness and his power are so vast, it reaches across the cosmos and into each of our lives. He promises to remake us. He promises to make sure that he wants to recreate us in his image again. We are living in this sin tarnished world. God wants to recreate us, get him back to him once again. Mm. So that, so for me personally, I feel why I need to worship God as a creator mm -hmm. is he is the only person who sympathizes with me, who, who takes my trouble upon himself as if he is going through that. When I cry, he also cries with me. When I'm sad, he also is sad. So he, the, what uh, makes me more, more close to him is he sympathizes and he makes me make he makes sure that mm -hmm. I am cheerful mm -hmm. the next moment mm -hmm. if I if I depend on him and I choose him to be faithful that he will give me the same uh, happiness what he expects from me that is why he will give me the happiness that passes understanding so I know that this this tribulation which I am going through is for a short time and then. I will be happy again with him. So that makes me more closer to him than the creative power. Mm -hmm. The creative power does come in, but then this is a pride because he is the one who establishes me and my faith becomes stronger in him. So that becomes a more a cause for me to worship him as a creator. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you very much. That, that, that's the beauty, beauty of it. That, that, that's, that's what it is all about in each one of our lives. But the beauty of a creator becoming a creation mm -hmm. and getting into our lives so personally so that we always pray, you remember? Melt me, and mold yes. me, fashion me. Do we really allow God to mold us, fashion us, reshape us? And there's a beautiful song. Okay. The potter and the clay. I am the clay. clay. You are the potter. But are we able to cooperate with the potter just as the clay cooperates with the potter? Importantly for you and me is this. The God who created and who sustains billions of galaxies is the same God. Not only in whom we live and move and have our being, according to Acts chapter 17 verse 28, but also who works in us to give us a new heart, to purge us from sin and make us into this new creature in Christ. And that's what Paul says it very clearly. If you are in Christ, you are a new, new creature. creation. And that close is this all part of our mighty card. Yes. And of course, when we talk about the book of Genesis to Revelation, it is completely a good news that is the gospel and there's judgment. And of course, there is creation too. You know, look at how closely, you know, tied Jesus as a creator is to just remind us that Jesus is not only creator, but he is a redeemer too. Right? He's not only a creator, he is a what? A redeemer. And then, in the moment that his role as a creator is diminished, as the theory of evolution inevitably does, uh, his role as a redeemer comes into question as well. We are talking about judgment. Why the book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 7 is talking about not only his creative power, but his what? Judgment and power. Right? The book of the, the, the book of Revelation is not only the book of the gospel or the good news, at the same time, it is a book of judgment. 
That makes sense? Yes, but I have one uh, question. Huh? I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, if it, uh, I don't know how to address it. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, in the book of Revelation, mm -hmm. uh, we, we hear the, the angels going around, hovering around the, around the, um, around the throne of God, mm -hmm. saying, holy, holy, mm -hmm. Justin. Are the angels judging mm -hmm. God? Is my question. Uh, Angels okay, cannot That's it. That's yeah, what yeah, I want to know. Yeah, yeah. When you say you are holy, you are just, what am I telling about you? I'm justifying about you. Mm -hmm. So are the angels justifying God that he is worthy, he is holy, he is just, he is righteous? Mm -hmm. Are they doing it? Why, why is he doing that? Okay, number, number one, the context is absolutely, we'll understand the context. Number one, okay. Now where is God? Is in the most holy place right now. Okay, what is he doing there? He's judging you and me. Okay, the one thing is for sure. Okay, okay. Uh, and in the whole book of Revelation, you have a runner. What is that runner going through? Okay, the simple phenomena you'll be able to see that the whole angels and seven always telling Amen, 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 Amen. Have you heard the sentences every time? Okay, why is the statement called Amen is always coming? But don't go forget, don't go forget one thing is absolutely very sure. We have a throne room, we have the elders, we have the angels, they are dealing only with this earth at the moment. Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay. When they are dealing with this earth, okay, they are re-emphasizing everything what is happening around this earth is not fair, but according to what they could see from their perspective, okay, when you and I are not being able to see that. Does it make sense? From their perspective, like for example, okay, every prayer is answered when you pray and you see an amen going up there from an angel. How many angels are there on this earth? Everybody has an angel, right? Everybody has an angel. Every prayer which is being prayed here is being touching God. And everything on this earth, as human beings, we are telling it is unjust. Everybody, you know, on this earth, we're telling, okay, most probably God is not there. What do you expect the heaven should be able to reciprocate an answer? When they so see from their perspective. Right? So, uh, are the angels, again I ask, are the angels judging God? They are not judging God, but they're affirming, okay, they're they affirming the character of God yeah. and says that, okay, you are just. That is it? When, just, when the whole justifying, that is it. Um, that, is, that is what I, I want to tell you. That this is what I am justifying God. I am giving a judgment about you. You are worthy. You are holy. You are righteous. I am giving an affirm affirmation as you said. Affirmation. You are. So it means we are judging God as righteous, as holy, as just. So when we say praise God, let his holy name be praised. We are also judging God. Say so you are worthy of all praise and glory and honor. Uh, okay. That's it. Talking about angels, first of all, angels are created beings. Yes. And then they are sinless. When the sin originated in heaven, they were given a choice whether to join creator or to Satan. But they made up their mind and they were so, this one, that they remained in the throne of God. They did not join with the evil one. Mm -hmm. So, they are not, for me personally, angels are not judging God. They are always saying, holy, holy. They cover their face and they bow down. Are we doing that? Sometimes, you know, including me, sometimes I'm also a little relaxed but in the church. But it shouldn't be. Because we have to know that there is God present wherever we are worshipping. So, judging uh, it's not recorded anywhere in the scriptures or even the pen of inspiration have said that we have only the redeemed ones are going to see what God has done for the redeemed ones. Why some people are not there in heaven because they're going to be shown the book of remembrance and they're going to see that God is just and God is faithful. And to make sure, it is written in the scripture also, Ahab, Saul, all this uh, Judas, even God didn't want them to be lost in heaven. 
but it lost the eternal life. He gave the last chance for them to repent. But they were so hard, uh, stiffened that they did not repent. So this, what I'm saying is we cannot say that we are going to judge, our angels are judging God, but they're only praising because they were already given the chance in heaven. But they worship God. So, so that uh, adding to what you said, that uh, books will be given. The books of remember, books of people will be given. So, what does the scripture say? That we are going to judge the saints, judge the people. So, are we not giving judgment when I say, when I when I'm uh, when you are going to look when you are going to heaven and you are going to look into my book? Say, why Nali didn't make it up to heaven? I said, oh, blah blah blah. Look at this. What she's done. You you are looking for yourself. So what am I telling God? God, you are just. You see, what you did was right. I never knew what Nalini was all about. You are right. So what are we doing? We are judging God. We are telling you are righteous and worthy about what He is. Yeah, what most, is most probably, okay, there is a, uh, yeah, there's a perspective of, uh, okay, what Sister Nali is talking about. For me, when I talk about judgment, okay, about, uh, you know, God and me judging God, uh, you know, about his character, whatever it is, I think that for me, I feel, am I really worthy, okay, to even think about God and say you are right or you are wrong, you know, for me, for, 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 this is my personal uh, conviction of myself, okay, uh, uh, this is, you have your perspective of it, okay. Uh, I don't want to contradict that one, okay, but um, you might be right, I'm not saying no, but for me personally, when I talk about the very word called judgment, you know, you know, who am I to be able to, you know, because, because first of all, for me, I feel that I'm a, I'm a greatest sinner in every angle of life and uh, looking into the righteous God, he will always be right, okay, there is no, there is only when there is right and wrong, okay, of course, like for example, I can judge my wife when I go to heaven, okay, or my wife can judge me when she goes to heaven and, you know, that power will be given, that's what the Bible says it absolutely very clearly, stating that, okay, when you read into the books and find out and think so that, yeah, that, that, that judgment for the sinful human beings is fine, okay, perspective, but when it talks about God, okay and uh, I have a problem in that personally okay because the very word called judgment you know the very word called judgment you know has its own significance I believe oh okay, that's my own personal uh, okay personal thing. but uh, yes sir uh, brother Adam. yeah the word judgment has many meanings so we have to understand what context because as uh, as creation as uh, creatures angels we are all given the ability to judge that means to figure out what is right what that's like conscience it's like a thermostat you know is it hot or cold uh, is god acting justly or unjustly job asked the same question so that itself the word is genetically used to imply our ability to know what is this or what is that so it's nothing wrong to figure out god what are you doing you know so uh, remember the context. In the context of what God is doing, investigative judgment or judging, you know, that is his prerogative. We also can judge God as in, you know, God, are you doing the right? So, so, uh, so let's understand the wide meaning of the word judgment. So it, it's not like, oh, you cannot judge God. God is, what did God say? Come, let us reason together. What does reasoning involve? Yeah. Judging yeah. between this and that. Okay, when you witness to somebody, what are you doing? In a way, you're you're saying, okay, this is right, that is wrong, or this is appropriate, this is not. When you go to the courts of uh, earth, what happens? The law is used to judge. Did you do the right thing or wrong? Okay, so just remember that the word judgment by itself is not a scary thing. No, yeah. it's just like what or, I, or that it's only reserved for God. No, was, no, everyone what thinking, is. What I was thinking is. Okay, when you talk about, uh, it is a comprehensive uh, word when you talk about judgment. It, uh, it has a different uh, diagonals, that's what I feel. Okay, for me personally, what I feel is when you talk about judging, okay, are the angels judging God? Number one, the first point is, can we be able to judge God? In whatever the perspective we are on. Okay, I don't okay. Think so. and for me, personally, it becomes so mm -hmm. uncomfortable in no way that I could be able to say, Okay, 
you know, mm. when it comes to judgment, it's an entirely different. Uh, uh, I don't know whether I could. Yeah, be remember the context. Yeah, okay, remember but the context. Okay, a very comprehensive, very broader idea about what judgment is all about. Yes, brother. Uh, yes, uh, see, okay. uh, I just want to pick up on brother Nuns. Uh, when it comes to judging God, first of all, as far as humanity is concerned, mm -hmm. we don't have the supporting evidence mm -hmm. to prove God is guilty or he's doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. But since from the day one the great controversy started, the devil is the one who is provoking us that he is not fair, mm -hmm. he's not loving, mm -hmm. he's a dictator, mm -hmm. okay, and he's misleading, okay, and and therefore technically it is the when judging God, who is leading? The devil is leading. Okay. Whereas the other judgment is concerned, where is the good news? For me, the judgment, I can't even wait for that day. Because I, I am sick and tired of, because I know in Jesus, I will be found not guilty. So Amen. the more we drag the court case, and I know that I will be vindicated, Okay, I want this thing to be finished. And that is a joy. Revelation, I used to run away from the book of Revelation when I was a youth and in Spicer College. I, I took Revelation because I have no other choice. And I got C minus. Okay. And so, but from the time when the desire of finding the truth and his righteousness occurred in my heart, the book of Revelation for the last seven weeks we've been studying, the book of his Revelation is a book of hope. Okay, so uh, that is the beauty of it. And the last part before we conclude is the Creator on the cross. The Creator on the cross. Remember the creation what you talked about. Uh, unfathomable, right? Can't unimagine this my human mind can never comprehend about what creation is all about, power is all about, nothing. Okay. That's one part of the story I sister uh, was talking about. The other part of the character of God, or uh, other part of the side of God is you see Jesus become the creator, dying on the cross of Calvary. What more could he be able to do to save humanity? Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Emmanuel, godliness. And our patriarchs have always experienced one thing. The more we are put into the defeated situation, the more they experience God. And I like the book of Habakkuk in every angle. So beautifully says, even though there is no grapes in the wine, even though there might not be any sheaves in the herds, but yet, will I be able to what? Follow. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, there is, for me personally, I feel there is nothing that we have really understood God. Whatever we are reading, whatever we are reading to experience is not even a fragment of who God is all about. Let us make sure that we worship the God, not only because of his creative work, but the same creator who came down to this earth and died on the cross of Calvary, so that through him that we have an opportunity to have eternal life. May God bless us as we contemplate, and as we worship the Lord day in and day out in our lives. May we remember one thing, may we remember one thing, the day is not going to be too far. The Lord is coming soon. Either you be able to be on the right or the left, but still the Lord is awaiting with his arms open wide, inviting me and you to be a part of it. Because John chapter 3 verse 16, very familiar, for God so loved the world and he gave his only begotten son, for whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have what? Everlasting. God bless you. Sir, so, so
Alright, just one more point. Judgment, the idea to measure things, is a God-given thing. In fact, to all, even inanimate and animate objects. And it says that in the end, the whole universe will judge if God was, God is just and fair. Because the creation, one, at least one <laughs> creative being accused like that, and we are all in the, the entire universe changed because of that, right? So use your judgment correctly, you know, because God has given all the opportunity with the power of choice to decide whatever is true, whatever is just, or whatever, you know. So just let's remember that. I think it's for sure. I can never get into the perfection of the Rana, that's for sure. Ne never, okay. Let's talk about a perfect God. Only he should be able to help us out. And Brother Anand is always understanding. Okay. He understands me more than I could understand uh, Anand. Right, Anand? Yes. Oh, okay. I found <laughs> you. I found you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the beautiful lesson about uh, you know, the Creator God. And uh, uh, he's worthy of all the worship and praises. And the uh, book of Revelation is so giving us an opportunity of hope that he's still been able to be close with us. His promises are always there, 24 to 7. He will never leave us, he will never forsake us. May we embrace the beautiful promise of Jesus and move forward the way how the Lord wants to. And may his name be magnified and glorified. Let's seek the Lord in prayer. Gracious God in heaven, we want to thank you Lord for all the blessings. And thank you for helping us to have the cleanliness of Jesus Christ and heaven and his righteousness and his goodness. This Lord, may we be able to always experience your peace and happiness. May you give us the gentleness of heart that we could worship you in spirit and in truth. And may your name be magnified and glorified in each one of our lives so that we could represent you rightly unto our lives. So many more souls might have an opportunity to be able to proclaim your love and your affection in each one of our lives. Thank you, Lord, for being with us and answering our prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's take a break for a few minutes and we'll be back again.